Hi folks. Let's turn this seven and a half inch by three inch chunk of aluminum into this. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So this whole job would be a great job for the lathe. We're only gonna do the first part right now on the lathe, which is this outside profile here. Um, this actually gets machined away as well, as you can see here in the Fusion 360, but I'm leaving it on right now because we're gonna use it to hold it on a set of soft jaws to mill this interior here. We'll talk more about that later. So we've got the Tormach lathe set up. I got a forge all in there. Let's throw our stock in there. Rock and roll. I dialed this in yesterday when we cut the first one. And whenever I loosen the four jaw, I always loosen the two jaws um, opposing the logo on the chuck. It just makes it easier to know which two to tighten. Um, I'm not expecting it to be spot on, but I bet you it's not too far off. I want to make sure I'm seated squarely. Now the piece yesterday, it's a saw cut, so not all four pieces sat perfectly. We're machining all the geometry, so it's not hypercritical, but um, for rigidity and just general avoiding future problems, I like to seat them all. So this is also what happened yesterday, is I've got about 10 thou total run out on this seven and a half inch part, but it's not something I can dial in. So here we're, we're 10 high, but we're not, it's, bas it's basically like it's out of concentricity. So does anybody have, I don't work with seven and a half inch extrusion that often. Is that common? It won't be an issue here. Uh, but I spent a few minutes trying to chase down those last few foul yesterday, and I couldn't get it. Um, I loosen where I'm low. It's just kind of bumping around. Oh well. Here's our tool path. We're doing the facing and then the profiling. I've got the tool right at the end of the tool path just to check plenty of clearance. Working with these larger diameter parts is the one area where I have had some troubles with the Tormach lathe, and it's simply because to have the right surface feet per minute out at six or seven inches, you have to, you've got to run fairly slow, you know, three, four, five hundred RPMs max. Um, more more uh, slower in steel than here in aluminum, and the, the machine just doesn't have a ton of torque out at those uh, out of those distances where you've got to turn at those slower speeds. So. Here we're doing fine, or pr pretty good, but if you did work all day long on seven inch material, this isn't the right machine for you, you know, period. On the flip side, I, I don't think I'm the first machinist to try to do something at the limits of their machine. And it hasn't been a great machine because you know, the 90% of what we do is one or two inches and it's great for that. I haven't particularly had uh, any power or horsepower problems there um, and we're still learning you know we're still learning really how to run a lathe right um, so so far so good on that much
So, like I said, not proud of this. We gotta keep these chips way shorter, but great finish. So, we'll get there. Mill time. So we're gonna take this and hopefully make it into this. We're gonna super fly down this excess material that we had to have in there to hold it in the four jaw chuck. Yep, that was a little bit of extra material, but it's, it, sometimes it's easier uh, to get the job done and, and time has some value, so you gotta weigh that. So yeah, it's gonna take us some time to machine this away, but for two parts, it's better than making custom soft jaws or uh, for me, at least, a more complex fixture that I couldn't at least figure out. And, and then we'll shear hog out and then we'll use some ball end mills and bull nose end mills actually to finish this up.
Boom, so there we go. We'll take a look at the Fusion 360 cam. I haven't figured out whether I'll do it in this video or a separate one on it. Um, but you know, where we took the time to do a really, really small step over, honestly get a pretty good finish, but man, this job would have been so much better uh, or faster in the lathe. So now um, I gotta figure out how to machine this whole inside out and how to hold it, um, which I, I've got an idea. Let me think, normally I have this all figured out ahead of time. Let me chew on that, I'll be right back. Here's what I'm going with. Two strap clamps and underneath this gaffer's tape is a piece of aluminum. Where's the extra version? It's like 16 gauge or something. It actually happens to all be powder coated. Just cut a couple pieces and then clean them off so they don't have any chips on them. Um, and the idea is that aluminum helps me strap down with this strap clamp, but obviously not mark or deform the finished surface here. I put a piece of gaffer tape under the aluminum as well. And when I tightened these down, I felt how tight I could get them because I knew if they slipped or if I wasn't able to get tight enough, then this wasn't going to work. I think knock on aluminum, it's gonna work. And this is one telltale sign is that's solid. Now the biggest concern I've got is the shear hog is a type of tool that does induce vibrations and, and rattles parts around. So I wanna make sure that stays okay. Um, there's some other tricks I could do um, if that does happen. Lots of creative ways that we could fixture this though. We could have done a set of soft jaws at an angle, um, the reason I didn't want to hold it on the periphery, heck, I even thought about just putting it back in the, uh, the fore jaw, putting the fore jaw on the, the table. But I, I like this idea because strapping down here pushes the center boss down against something which I think is going to help with rigidity. Um, the best thing, I think, and in fact, what I'll do if this doesn't work is we'll machine a plate it has a boss in it, and that'll give me the locating um, diameters, if you will. And then there's some ways I think I could modify these strap clamps. You know, I thought about trying to get them at an angle. The problem is that right now your pin is up and down, so your nut is uh, wouldn't clamp down straight. You know, if your if your clamp is at like this angle, obviously the nut can't secure it down. But there's a ways we could make a little V block that would work, and then you would be mating at less of a pointed angle and more along the, the face uh, underside here. But I think this is gonna work. Let's see. Awesome! Oh my god, I friggin love the Superfly. That is great. What's also awesome is that tells me we should be good on our fixturing. That sounded great, cut great, so let's rock and roll with the rest of this.